If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Jack this was an there. interesting episode of Mind Pump. We actually went into it. We went left. We went into it. Then we ex- went right. Expecting to do we a went up and down. A Q&A episode, and the conversation got uh, really good. And so we just stayed on that topic. And so this said, episode... fuck you, bird. Go away. Yeah. So, well, I mean, we start off bullshitting like we normally do. We talk about the movie Grease, yeah. uh, which is an excellent cinematic... Hidden passion of mine. <laughs> ...beauty. <laughs> yeah, we talk, obviously. We talk about the best and worst actors, uh, that, uh, according to our opinion, which is, of course, accurate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how we listen to ourselves on Mind Pump. Uh, staying true to yourself. And then we get into education. We talk about the education system. Uh, how it is with the with our kids, what we think the future of education looks like, and we talk about our role in educating people in the fitness world. So this entire episode kind of focuses on that particular topic. It was totally unplanned. Uh, we have a good time when we do episodes like this. Very interesting. Love to hear your feedback on this episode and what your opinions are on it. I think uh, education is uh, a heated topic. Mm. It always is. It's dealing with our with our kids, yeah. um, and it's been politicized. It's ready to be disrupted. It's going to I be can't wait. whether we like it or not. Uh, also, there's only two days left. Two days left for what? our summer starter pack. This is something we put together for all of our new listeners. It includes everything you need to get started in fitness. It includes MAPS Anabolic, which is our foundational program, MAPS Prime, which is going to help you correct muscle imbalances and develop better recruitment patterns. It also includes a nutritional component. There's a nutrition guide and fasting guide in there. And then it includes access to our forum so that we can watch you and help you along the way, as well as our large mind pump community that's on that forum. We've taken all those things individually, put them together in this pack, and cut the price more, more in half. So it's a huge discount. You can find the Summer Starter Pack at mindpumpmedia.com. Summer, Summer days. Oh, wow. oh, na, na, na. Tripping away. Na, I just na, got na, my na, maps na, anabolic. Na, 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 na. Ooh. Is there more? Is there more? Is there maps prime? <laughs> Is there more? Is there more? Can I get it on a dime? <laughs> no, it's more expensive than that. <laughs> that, was a, yeah. that was the most effective commercial we've it ever might, done. It might have been the best commercial we've ever done for sure. It was for yeah. sure. I can't was, believe I put you. My money random. I'm a little totally worried random. that you know yeah. that that well. The Grease? You never what watched Grease? Well, I have, but not oh. enough to be able to sing the jingle. Oh, my God. <laughs> Grease is great. That's like... Uh, First you, of all... Just play that over the loudspeaker. All of a sudden, like every like lady in America will just stop First of all, what me, they're doing and they'll start singing. Let me explain to you my connection to Grease. Mm. As a as a young please man, do, as do. a young man growing up in San Jose, uh, the product of uh, Sicilian immigrants, mm. it was hard for me to fit in with any crowd because I'm, I wasn't really white. Like I'm kind of like my mm. skin tone is like tan, uh, yeah, and yeah. I'm not really uh, I'm not Hispanic. And you know, there's a lot of Hispanics uh, in San Jose, and so I, I didn't really fit in. I didn't really know what my identity was, and then I discovered John Travolta. Uh, in uh, good old John Travolta in uh, Greece and in Saturday Night Fever, and I'm like, hey. that's me right there. Yeah, that's who I want to be. I connected more to him in Face Off. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more. That's my. That's more my Travolta. Hey, isn't that just what, saying? Isn't what's his name in that Nick, too? Nick, Nicholas uh, Cage. Cage. God yeah. damn it! Great. Yeah. Cl- that's a classic. Did you know Nicholas Cage is He's such a great actor. Just one of the best yeah. actors of all time. Amazing. Him and Keanu, him and Keanu Reeves. Just uh, amazing. Brilliant <laughs> actors. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. yeah. No, you know what? Brad Pitt. Character. Dude, Nicholas Cage is better than than Keanu Girl. Reeves. Uh, yes. Here's why. I just watched not, a movie with Brad am, Pitt, and I was like, "Wow, that is the worst acting I've ever seen." No, no, no. Brad Pitt. No, 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 no. He like if you watch it like he does not know how to show any emotion Haven't you, ever. Have you seen the movie Seven? Yeah. Oh, you're not a Brad Pitt fan? No, oh, I, I was. I, I got to disagree then, with you. Or no, Fight listen, Club. Fight okay. Club. He was here's, brilliant. Here is no. what. Here is the latest movie he did. Okay, I'm going to argue this all day. Okay. Um, it, it was with uh, where basically his wife was a spy, a German spy. Oh, I saw that movie. Yeah. What did you think of his acting performance? Um. Okay, that was not super flat and horrible. Well, yeah, but I also think that. 
I also thought that was kind of his character in that. Here's here's to me this Keanu is the Keanu Reeves plays the same to, character to not yes. have any emotion. Keanu Reeves is the same guy. Is the surfer guy from Point Break yeah. in every movie? <laughs> yeah. Every movie. No, no, no. You got it wrong. Or Bill uh, and Ted's Excellent thank Adventure. You. Whichever no one you want to refer way. to. But he's the same. He is the same guy. Neo, you live in he's the. He's reliable. Yeah. You're like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he is a surfer. He just learns more ninja moves, dude. In every movie. Now that being said, John Wick Two is amazing. That being said, he is. <laughs> Could anybody have played Neo in The Matrix better? No. No, it fit that role perfect. So I don't think he necessarily is a good actor. I just think they finally found a role for him where his same character well, and worked that's, out and that, well. That's yeah. how that, I think that's how it works for some of that. But Brad Pitt, bro, Brad Pitt's all over the spectrum, See, I bro. liked him before that Brad movie. Pitt, I fight, just, are uh, you Fight Club? And like, are you kidding me with yeah. uh, with uh, Snatch? Yeah, I liked Fight Club. Like but Snatch was like one of the Ed fucking- Ed Norton carried that movie though, you know what uh, I mean? Yeah, you could argue that. He was good in Troy. Yeah, yeah, he, he played was. a good. He, he was. played a I good like that movie. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess. I guess maybe it's performance by performance. You know. Yeah, okay. How about this? Here's a better one. Who's a great? Who's who? Do you guys think is like a fucking great actor? Like just for pure acting chops. Kevin, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Ooh, look yeah. at you. We both could. Kevin really? Spacey. We just love Kevin Spacey. I think he's good, but I don't I think. I like Ed Norton, too. I don't think. Ed Norton has got to be one of the best, but I think Daniel Day Lewis well, fucking yeah, he, shits on everybody. Well, yeah, because he's like crazy. He could play anything yeah. and be very convincing. Well, he, he Johnny Depp is going to be up there, too. Who? Yeah. Johnny Depp. As a great actor? Yes, dude. Oh, no. oh my yeah. God. Yes. I think he's no. good, but I don't think he's great. You got to think of the the roles that some of these characters. But he's take. always because listen, a typecast though. You know, like well, he's you, always doing the same kind of guy. He's no, also crazy. No, yeah. he does weird. He does weird. Like people that go he's all the weird over. Guy. Like if you play a good guy, a bad guy, a scary guy, a crazy guy. Oh, here's one. Uh, we can't not for say fucking what's his face from Batman. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale. Yeah, he's amazing. Talk about like and, and look at like what they do to their body, what they do with their their uh yeah, their the, whole the pers- machinist. Yes, they're, oh, they're, they're I mean oh, yeah, yeah. when you Christian see Bale's when you there. see actors go on all ends of the spectrum, that to me is what is your gauge of how tall they are. Like a movie like like you said Matrix, one of the greatest movies ever and Keanu Reeves is the main actor, but that movie was epic and that role fit his his character mm-hmm. already where yeah. you you take someone like Christian Bale and you look at all the different types from superheroes to crazy killers yeah, that has to, to like, be a factor right yeah. you, like what are, diversity yeah, yeah. How, and, and that's why I was defending Brad Pitt because if you look at all the different movies that he's played in he's done a he's done a different role many times he can do right. the he can do the romance he can do the action he can be the tough guy he can be the crazy guy he, he's kind of played I haven't, all yeah I just haven't seen him like really with any emotion like so uh, other movie that really pissed me off that he was in oh he, he was in uh, um Oh, this cartoon. Uh, oh, it's so bad, dude. He cannot, like... Who? Like, how can you not act well in a cartoon that you're a voiceover? <laughs> oh, his yeah, voice I mean, is God, bad. it was horrible. Megamind. Uh, Megamind. Oh, I never saw Watch that. Watch Megamind oh, yeah. and tell me, yeah. like, his character yeah. is dog shit. He's right. You know who, you know who else is, is good that's just uh, underrated, but I think is an excellent, excellent actor? Hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh yeah, no, yeah, he's excellent he's, yeah. actor. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's excellent actor. You know what? I only didn't like the, him. I didn't like him because he was fucking the Titanic guy, right? So, I, <laughs> so it I did a lot like, of the warm up. It did. Yeah, so yeah. he had to I he agree. had to play some other roles for me before I became a fan. But remember, he's remember got, the beach? Yeah, uh, he got all crazy in that. Movie. So, and yeah. that's a good example, right? He's What's another he Gilbert Grape. Yeah, mm-hmm. great movie. Yeah, right, all over the spectrum, right? So right. I think that I think that's a, a good another good example for sure. But yeah, I think I like thinking of the worst act. I think Keanu Reeves is up there with like. Uh, I, have, I have a soft spot for Kenya. Yeah. For who? <laughs> for Ke- Kenya. That's oh, what, I thought you were talking about the, you, the singer Kenya. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, what? Kenya? That's what his close friends call him. <laughs> Kenya. Yeah. K Dog. Dude, I can't, it's, it's I can't K, look K at K money. You, I can't yeah. look at you straight, dude, with the yeah. freaking duct taped headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I tell you right now, you're like the juggernaut. I, I I can hear you guys on another level. Wow. So I feel, I swear to God, this is weird for me. Like I feel like uh, at some point it's going to happen, right? At some point uh, I'm going to be wrong and you guys going to be right. It hasn't happened yet. Wow. But like it keeps happening where you guys you sure make fun of happened. me for something and yeah. then I end up. It's almost like the universe is either on my side or is just trying to fuck with you guys and make you guys stronger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Because you guys keep doing that. 
I feel like we're on point all the time. I don't yeah. know, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I think yeah. me and Adam have something. I don't know. There's a lot of instances I think you now. only listen and play the episodes where you are right. <laughs> no, it's not about the episodes. Like, confirmation oh, bias. I think whenever yeah. Justin and I talk, yeah. you just fast forward. You just listen for to sure yourself. Like, yeah. For you just, sure, oh, I, I was right there. Let me get, let me get I was right there. Yeah. I was right there. Let me get to my point yeah. real quick that I make. It's for sure what I do. I have a bit. These guys? Yeah, I just listen to the parts where I talk, so an hour episode ends up becoming like How are you? How are you on your your mind pump game right now? I'm actually- What do you mean? Get your mind pump game like i haven't listened to our own episodes in a very long time this is the longest i've gone without like listening to our own here's what i'm guilty of i'm guilty of listening to the beginning of our episodes where we don't talk about fitness yes and then when we get into fitness i don't i don't listen well that makes a lot of sense when you think about it because that's for ourselves it's probably the most entertaining part if i'm going to listen to anything it's going to be justin and you making jokes or jabbing at each all of us at each other right versus I already know all of your theories on like, that's the health thing. And yeah, I already like, know exactly what's in your head as yeah. far as like, your philosophy and what you're going to say and what studies you're going to recite. You know, it's it's, it's like on like it's the autopilot. Yeah, it's, my the, head. it's the off the wall stuff or the yeah. you sharing a story about your kids or going going into topics like that that interests me more. Well, than here, you. so right. I'll t- I'll tell you something that I notice about myself because I'm very critical, right? When I hear when I listen to myself on on the show, and I have a tendency to do this. Where and you guys are gonna be like, no shit. It, like I get passionate about something, and I get so fucking passionate that I, 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 the way I speak and come across is like, like this is the truth, like nothing else, and ah. Oh. And I hear myself sometimes like, oh, I come across a little too well. That's why we make too strong. Well, that's why we make a great balance because yeah, I feel like we I, soften I, that I up. you know, and sometimes I have to take the bullet and be wrong just so I can challenge your certainties. <laughs> so, because somebody has to keep you in check with your fucking, I'm so sure yeah, about all this. Devil's advocate. Yeah, somebody, I get too. I get too passionate. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's mm. what it is. What yeah. would you guys say your weaknesses are? Um, Making up words. Yeah. You have a weakness in making up words? Well, no, that's a strength of mine. <laughs> it's, it's a strength that I make them turned up. Turned it on. into a strength. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just, yeah. I, turned, I turned a weakness into a strength. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, for real. I don't have any. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. No, well, of course I do. Lately, I feel like I, I have been ruffling a lot of feathers. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if I'm extra um, rumbunctious. Is that a word? R- mm, rambunctious. Yeah, rambunctious. <laughs> rumbunctious. I like rumbunctious. <laughs> Yeah. That's when you drink rum, yeah, and you get a little <laughs> sponsored by Captain Morgan. Yeah. It's rum bunctious time. Uh, oh, shit. No, lately, I, I, lately, the some of the stuff that we've been talking about, we've been touching the third rail a lot lately, and we've been fucking it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like I got on top. I've of been it. sliding on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know? you, at the end of the day, I think one of the, there's certain people that feel like. Um, that we we have to speak a certain way, and I'm like, no, fuck that. Like, this is my show or our show. I'm gonna fucking say whatever I want to say, and it's I'm sure it's gonna offend some people, but it's I'm I care more about being true to myself than I care about what people think. Mm. Yeah. To me, that uh, to me, that's a better representation of integrity, and and I I believe that there's not enough of that in the world, and I feel like even myself, we I feel we all are influenced by others so much that everybody struggles. And I don't want, just because I'm on a platform where, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people are listening to us, that uh, I'm, it's going to sway how I think or how I talk. Like, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm going to share my opinion on things. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that disagree and are offended by it. But hey, it, it's me and I care more about being me then I care about appeasing everybody and giving you what you want to hear. You know, so. you know what's going to change a lot of things is when people's uh, internet searches become public because they will. At some, por- at some point, people people's internet searches and what they look at will be accessible somehow to everyone else. And then when everybody sees how fuck it, how fucked up everybody is, then everyone's going to like be cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when you can look at like that preacher over there and you look at his internet porn searches and you're like, yeah, right, dude. I see what you look at on the internet or, you know, what people, then you'll start to see people yeah. start to chill out. You oh, know you what I'm think saying? so? You oh, know. dude, come on, bro. I mean, <sighs> it's, you know, I, I'll tell you what right yeah, now. I think you identify a lot with that because you are, um, that's a lot of you, right? Like you definitely, if you go through, if you, this is true too. If like, if you literally like, I would not be afraid. I don't delete my history on my, my, my computer. You could go through and see my searches. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't, don't think you would find anything weird. Well, what I mean is like, if everybody listening right now, I guarantee you can relate to this. 
at some point you have conversations with people or a text thread with friends or something that if it went public, yeah. you would be judged very, very harshly. Oh, okay. Everybody. Everybody does that. You know what I'm saying? So when we walk around and pretend like- So once all your dirt is out there. Everyone's gonna dirt is going to be out there. Then yeah. everyone's going to be like, well, I guess we just saw- Well, I, that, I guess I, if that feeds into my opinion, right? Uh, that I feel like I care more about being true to myself because- I, f- I feel like I can sleep at night. I'm comfortable, right? Like no yeah. one's going to find something out about me and be like, oh, I can't. Adam's totally like this guy. Oh, but so he much says better it. to be that one. Right. Like, yeah. okay, you may think I'm an asshole, but when you meet me, you know, you might actually find out that I'm a lot nicer of a guy. Yeah. You're like, at least that he. he the- well, you also do the strategy where you, it's very effective. I've actually witnessed it uh, firsthand <laughs> where yeah. people are like, oh man, I'm going to meet that asshole, Adam. And then you're not that much of an asshole. And so they, because they expected you to be one, mm. they're like, he's really nice. I'm not an asshole. It's a very, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a very it's smart a strategy. What I what I am is I'm very uh, blunt and candid. I think that I I speak my mind, and a lot of times it's not what somebody wants to hear. <laughs> uh, you know why I'm laughing right now? Because it's genetic. After meeting your uncle and here, uh, oh, yeah. oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. After meeting your uncle, yeah. I'm like, wow, it's totally genetic. It's in the genes. It's in the genes. Great yeah. guy. He's a great guy, but yeah. super well, like you know, no the, filter. And the irony, and you guys are just exactly the same. Well, the all. irony yeah. in that is, and this is the whole nature versus nurture argument, right? Is I mean, I had no real connection to him as a child. Like we didn't get connected until I was older. Like my mom and him don't really speak, and so uh, I I started to seek out my family. Um, as I got into my twenties, because I got older and, you know, there's a certain point, I think every, every young man or young woman go where they realize, at least it, someone that's grew up like me, where it was very disconnected from his family, where, uh, you're used to that and that's comfortable and normal for you. It's not a big deal. But then you start to wonder like, Oh, what would that been like? Had I been connected to all my family members and how much are we alike each other? And what can I learn from them? And, and so I started to seek out all of my family members. And it's one of the things that I do really enjoy about uh, social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, the ability to connect to people like that. It allowed me to connect to a side of my family that I was disconnected. And my uncle and I, we really didn't get connected together. You know, they had a little bit of, of connection with me as a child, but not none of no real memories. Dude, I he have. cracks me up, dude. Your yeah. uncle, and he yeah. and he doesn't give a shit. And I love that. I love that about him. It's hilarious. <laughs> and he's a good guy too. He's a good he's yeah. a good guy. So it's not it's not bad. It's but a good. I, I constantly, constantly, always my entire as long as I can remember is. Is uh, the minute I was talking, I was getting in trouble for having a big mouth. Hmm. Always, 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 See, always. For me, it was different. It was more of uh, you know when I would joke around and I would like uh, disrupt the class. Like I was uh, constantly like class clowning, like trying to like get people's attention from that. You know, from that way, and obviously you kind of see a little bit of that on the show, but like that was something that always got me in trouble. I would like get sent out of class one time, like me and my friend both, like because we just had this thing where we would just, I mean, we get bored. Like my problem is I get bored. Like I, 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 ch- I check myself on this all the time because like if we're talking about the same stuff that I know is helping people, I'm gonna get really bored because we we've talked about it to death. And, uh, and then you, you make know, an inappropriate joke. Yeah, and so I just gotta interrupt it and and be like you know, make it somewhat entertaining for myself. But uh, yeah, I used to get sent out of class all the time and I, I would have to sit out on this bench and, uh, you know, and I, that was the only way I got in trouble. See, I was the kid that, and my son's the same way, dude, and it cracks me up. I'll get these report cards and, or I'll go meet with the teacher and the, te- the teacher will say something like, uh, okay, so I met, I met up with the teacher a little while ago and it was like for an open house or whatever. And she goes, yeah, she goes, so, um, you know, obviously I'm human and sometimes I'll make a mistake on the board or something. She goes, but can you please have a talk with your son? Because then he corrects me in a very condescending way <laughs> in front of the classroom. Yeah. And I'm just like, ooh. Because <laughs> yeah. that was me, dude. I would, I, was, do that. Yeah. I would raise my hand and I would debate the teacher all the time. Yeah. All the time. And I'd piss everybody off all the time. And sometimes I won. Not often, because usually I was wrong because I was a kid. <clears throat> but sometimes I'd make a really good point and... Then you'd see them get really frustrated and angry, and I'd get in trouble did, for it. Did your parents? Did you guys' parents keep a lot of your schoolwork and papers and things you wrote from when you were a child? Yeah. Yep. Ha- have you been through it in a yep. long time? Uh, yep. Yeah. I looked it's through hilarious it. Hilarious. I looked read. through it not that long ago, and in elementary school, it all said it was all similar. It was all very bright, uh, very intelligent, daydreams a lot, talks too much, um, could put more effort. So it was like, and it's. I mean, it's hundred percent. I was aware of it. Like I'd show up to class, I'd be super bored, mm-hmm. not stimulated. And 
Um, I used to literally the teacher would be, te- especially in junior high, right? Junior high was just I went to a shit junior high, and most of my teachers were garbage, and uh, <laughs> they were they were fucking garbage. Like history class, uh, what was his name? Mister S- oh, fuck, what was his name? Oh, Mister Sweeney. You're gonna railroad him. Yeah, too, you huh? sucked, Mister Sweeney. Sweeney. <laughs> you fucking idiot. He would literally had he had a projector. Um, and he would put like the slides on the projector and it was the pages from the textbook. Oh, so man. all he would do is read the textbook, talk, like, like read, verbatim. Yeah. Like wow. duh, 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 here's the test in, you know, this part, take it, turn it in. That was it every day. Yeah. So I would sit in class and I didn't mind he reading had it. his tenure and I love, yeah, he was shit. And I loved history anyway. So all I would do is sit in class and read the history book. So I'd be. I'd finished the history book, you know, two months into school and, and we're still on, you know, you know, the first part of it or whatever. And so I'd ask him for more books and then he'd get mad at me and he'd be like, you didn't read it. And he'd try and quiz me and I'd get it right. And then he'd get even more angry. And he was just, and I remember telling him, I literally told my teacher that he was wasting our time. I said this in the class. Oh my God. How old were you at this time? <laughs> I was in seventh grade. Wow. So I rose my, I, I, I raised my, uh, no, I didn't raise my hand. I was reading the book because I was reading ahead because I was super bored. And this is when I discovered that I really liked history was in seventh grade. So I'm just reading ahead and I'm reading about ancient history and then American history. I'm having a great time. And he called on me in class and uh, so caught me off guard. So I said, uh, I, I didn't hear the question. And he's like, you're not paying attention, blah, 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 blah. And he's getting on my case. And I'm like, just ask me the question again because I didn't hear it all the way. And so he asked me the question and I knew the right answer. And, you know, the class kind of laughed because I knew the answer. So he turns around to go back to his work and I said, excuse me, can I say something? And he turns around and he says, you know, what? What would you like to waste our time or something like that? He's like real snarky. And so I said, all you do is you sit up there and you read the textbook. Oh my I can, God, you called him out like uh-huh. that? <laughs> I said that we can, I said we can do on our own. I said, and I, and I said, if this was uh, if this was a school that my parents were paying for, it'd be very, you know, where I could leave. You wouldn't be a teacher. You're wasting everybody's time. I said, why are you wasting your time? Why are you doing this? And uh, I got ripped. I got hammered for that. I got big trouble. But it was true. It was so fucking true. And that's my story. That's my life story. Because yeah. I've always had a big mouth and gotten in trouble for calling people out. For it's shit. funny that my mom just moved, right? So she she literally just moved into a new place. And so she was uh, sending me pictures of like old essays and stuff that I had wrote. And I got I haven't. It's crazy how much I forgot, you know, like I just don't remember. She sent me over some paper that I wrote on the future on what I saw my own future. And no stuff. way. What yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. I'll send it over to you guys. It's is a, it accurate? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Yeah, it, it's accurate as far as my values, right? Like All the right. things that I value, I valued that even young, you know, like even when I was a, a young child, you could see in my writing, you could see my ambition, well, well before any sort of real job. I mean, it was, I think it was 14 when 13 or 14 in this essay that I read. So, and the exact same way too, like, uh, you know, all the grammar's fucked up, but if you get the point across, if it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like, like nothing's changed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not much has changed, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was well written as far as the point that I was making. Right. But, uh, uh for sure, grammatically, did you guys daydream a lot? Oh, so oh, all the time. we're we're all, all, all alike. Um, I didn't ever challenge my teachers to that point, uh, which you just that's why I was fascinated to hear that story. But like Justin, I was always a class clown, so I was always goofing off. Um, I I skated through school with a three three zero plus GPA, but never applying myself. I I in fact I yeah. remember in high school. It became what I actually used to get off on was how much I could not pay attention, fuck around in school, and still pass all the tests and do do good enough. Right? That's so funny. I did so the same thing. right. So I had, like you know was, what's funny about that trait? That's actually the trait. That's a common trait amongst uh, entrepreneurs. <clears throat> is figuring out you hack the system. Well, you, what you're doing is you're actually uh, prioritizing your time, and you're like, well. If I can dedicate this little time and get the desired can, outcome, which is at this grade, yeah. then I can spend time doing these other things. Like playing basketball. Well, it's, well, it's my, my whole <laughs> game, skating. Yeah, my whole game in my head was to, to, to figure the teacher out and their, their patterns. So I would just like pay attention to like what kind of homework they would give, like what kind of questions they would ask. And then like when it came to test time, like like you literally knew like, oh, she's trying to trick me here. And then I would pick, you know, accordingly. And I would, every time it would get it right. Mm. It, once I figured out their pattern, sometimes it would take me like to the end of the semester to, to, to figure them out. I had, a, I had a teacher figure me out really well, and she was very effective with this one thing that she did. And so it was my 
think it was my journalism class. I was actually in journalism. I wrote some really good articles, by the way. Um, not good. I shouldn't say good, but really hilarious articles. Like one of them was like, what's the most effective martial art? Like I wrote this opinion piece, obviously. So, and it was great, but she, I would, I would piss her off all the time because I would talk back or I would debate or I would question things. And she figured me out about halfway through the school year. She took me outside. She actually stopped the class and I forgot what it was. I must've said something that pissed her off. So she's stopped the whole class. And she said, Sal, come out, come with me outside. I need to have a talk with you. So I'm in the classroom's like, ooh. So I go outside with her. I can't remember her name. I'll remember her name later. But anyway, she takes me outside and she goes, and she was very, this was very clever. She said, Sal, she goes, the entire classroom follows what you do. And they listen to what you say. And I need your help because a lot of these kids need help in this class. And she put it on me like that. That's beautiful. And from, uh, from, 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 that, yep. cl- from that day, knowing when she said that, first of all, she said... She empowered you, bro. She empowered me and and she made me believe... Smart leader. And whether this was true or not, that these kids, you know, they follow me and I need... And it's not just me that I'm fucking with, it's them. So th- from the rest of the school year, man, I was like quiet. I did, I did what she said. I was very obedient. And I remember that, like that was a very smart strategy. Well, talk about a very powerful, uh, yeah. powerful moment in your life too. Would you say that was, uh, cause you got to, even though we, we all probably have a bad taste in our mouth for public schools or schools in general, what do you have a teacher that impact you positively that you say like, okay, that, that was a solid teacher or that is something that has shaped and formed my character. So I had, um, yeah, I can remember there was a few of them and that's why I remember them so well. But uh, I had a psychology class that I took and the instructor encouraged uh, debate and discussion. You guys got psychology in high school? I, I, was a, I think it was an elective. Oh, fuck. We didn't, get college, yeah. we didn't get that until college. And he, he encouraged um, debate, discourse. Um, he would come up with a subject and have us debate them. And then he would, first he would ask us our opinion on the subject. And then he asked us to debate the opposite, which was brilliant for him to do. Like I have to debate the opposite side of what I believe. Mm-hmm. And I found myself just fascinated by this particular class and really enjoying the discussions that we had and the open environment. And, uh, so he was pretty impactful. Um, uh, there was a teacher in, uh, elementary school, uh, that I really enjoyed because, she also figured me out and would, you know, say these, you know, like like the like the teacher I just talked about. She would say certain things to me like that that would really empower me, um, and so that had a big impact on me. But for the most part, it was so unmemorable that yeah, I couldn't I couldn't tell you you know five teachers' names. I'm I'm the I'm the same way. I literally yeah. can I I can I can only actually think of one teacher that really impacted me like that, and it was my sophomore year. She was my English teacher ironically mm. right and they act, she actually came up to me and almost identical conversation so it's really crazy it's so funny how many parallels you and i have it trips me out when i hear stories that you talk about and i'm like god damn that we, we couldn't be more alike on some things uh this teacher so it was my english class again uh i think i was only getting like a b in the class uh and but i goofed off i was the class clown like definitely was the leader of the group i and i could make everybody distracted i could get everybody into the whatever the subject was that we were learning about and she recognized that and she had conversations with me afterwards of making me feel like everybody looked up to me and i remember feeling that way and then she also went on to say that i think that you should take advanced english I remember being like, are you kidding me? Like, I have a hard time putting two sentences together, right? Like, grammatically, I knew I wasn't good. Like, my papers always my papers always came back, like, chalked up, like, fucking red marks all over the place, mm. right? So, I, I didn't think that I was really good, but she... Because you equated grammar with writing. Exactly. Not the, not the actual content. And she is the one that built my confidence in the ability to write still and to not allow the grammatical part to hold me back, to... She thought my ability to speak my mind and express myself was very unique, and she made me feel unique about that, and she empowered that in me. And then she, t- and then from then on in school, so the last two years of high school, I was in advanced English, and it was her who made me who built that confidence and to not allow those those minor details to you know those she's like these are things that you can work on putting a comma here <laughs> capitalizing that run on sentences basic shit like that she's like but your ability to 
put you know, your thoughts in your mind on a piece of paper was very, very unique. And so she made me feel that way and empowered. And a, a subject that I was not drawn to or didn't like was something that I later on fell in love with. And I still do. I enjoy I, uh, all the way up into a, uh, adulthood and working for companies. I used to I used to write people's emails to their superiors and then I would have somebody go over and grammatically come back mm-hmm, and clean mm-hmm. up. Still very similar stuff that I do to this day. Like if there's something that what I, I if I have a thought or I have something, I can express it really well. Uh, as far as how I organize it is not a, a very, very, very good at all. Uh, but that was probably the only real teacher that, like I, Miss Goebel, I remember her name. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I can't remember probably any other teacher's name uh, going through high school. And then the only two subjects that really appealed to me in college was psychology. Was That was my first experience in psychology was uh, freshman year of college. And man, I love that. Mm-hmm. I love, I, that would became, that I became very passionate about that uh, and, and then later on went on to read on my own. And then, uh, what other subject did I really like back? You know, I didn't have anything else that I remember. I remembered a lot of stuff I did not like, like I, I hated history. So I was mm-hmm. not into history at all. Um, math. I loved, I liked math too. So math probably like statistics, uh, and getting into like analytics, stuff like that stuff that you uh, is obvious. That's the part of the business that I enjoy with what we currently do now. Uh, and psychology, like those were subjects. Oh, and art history. I should take that. Mm. That was a subject I would have never thought I liked in college. I took an art history class and fell in love with that. Yeah, oh, I, I, I think if we empowered kids a little bit more, um, <clears throat> it would be so effective. I mean, can you think of, I can't think of, in terms of potential um, influence on our children, I can't think of anyone, aside from their parents, uh, teachers. I can't think of anyone more. Teachers right? and coaches. Yeah, I coaches mean... Coaches for those that play sports. There's a lot of potential for right. influence there, and it's incredible how little value we place on those two positions um, because they're, they're, they can really shape and mold mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, the direction of child. I know, I know people who went to school. I had a client who, um, very advanced degree, Super intelligent guy. He actually runs a very large tech company. So I can't say his name or the company because people will know who he is right away. But let's just say he's a big mover and a big player. And he thought that he was, uh, first of all, he hated school growing up and thought he was not smart until he met a teacher that, like you said, with the English teacher, kind of explained to him that he just thought differently and to look at things differently. Ended up going to college and this guy graduated MIT, yeah. um, got into MIT and graduated and was just t- top of his class. It, yeah, thought he was it, stupid. That's what it takes. I mean, like, like unfortunately, most uh, most teachers, like they, they just want to kind of show up and, and they want to be there and they want to kind of run through the curriculum. Um, but uh, if they really took the time to connect, you know, with these students, like it, it took a long time for me to connect with the teachers. So you guys are mentioning specific people and mm-hmm. I really can't attribute any kind of influence any of these teachers had on me it, as far as like going up through high school and like, you, you know, uh, elementary and all that. Even in college for you? It took till college. And, and I didn't really, really find my passion. Like I was good at, um, like the sciences. Like that was like a little bit of my passion was the sciences. I hated math and I was good at English. And, uh, I had some, some teachers try and steer me in English, just like you uh, to some degree. Um, but, uh, it, it took till college where, where I finally like connected with this, this teacher who let me run a lab, uh, a biomechanics lab. And I, I went through, I think it was ergogenic aids was the, was the course, but, um, I was ab- actually able to, um, take all the students on campus and I ran them through all these different tests. And, uh, and then, and then I, I got really fascinated with all the variances between everybody and then started charting all this stuff for him and then giving him all the feedback. And he was like, wow, you, you went to such great detail with this. And he like, really like pumped me up about it and was like, you know, you're, I could tell you're passionate mm-hmm. about this. And, uh, that didn't even resonate with me until like later on, I was like, wow, I've been doing all these, like I work out. And this is part of like, I, you know, I got a scholarship to play football and like, you know, half of my time was split. Um, that was a job in itself. Uh, and then trying to cram all the studying at the same time. And, you know, I was really driven by anatomy and like the human body and like just how sophisticated and how intricate all these things are. And um, so that's it, it really took a while, man. It took a while for me to connect and and find my own way with mm-hmm. it. So uh 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, two two things come to mind when we talk about this particular subject. You know, we talk, we're talking a lot about teachers. And are you, are you going to touch the third rail right now? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm, not <laughs> like, gonna, I'm done like, doing dude, that. We're, we're on a roll right now. Are you going to Are you going <laughs> to no, go? You're going to go where I think I you're going. I don't think this is a third rail, but I, you know, uh, a lot of let's do it. Because uh, more than half my family are teachers. My mom's a teacher. My, yeah, my sister's a, a teacher. teacher. My, my my you know my late you know ex mother in law. She was a teacher. My aunts are teachers, and teachers are really hamstrung by uh, the system they're you know teaching children if anybody who if you have kids or you've ever been in education or you've ever taught kids or any of that stuff you know how individual education is like all kids learn differently different areas are different there's di- different circumstances like when I'm coaching clients or when I'm teaching a class myself I know that I have to follow the students that I have in front of me I know that I can't teach everybody the same because it's just not effective. And this is true for parenting as well. If you have three kids, each one of them, you may have to be a little bit different for each one of them in certain respects because one may be motivated one way and one may be motivated another way. And, you know, it's just, you know, one kid may put a lot of pressure on themselves. So putting more pressure on them just makes them, uh, you know, crack. Whereas another kid maybe needs a little bit of pressure. So I think uh, teachers are hamstrung because they're, 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 they have to follow certain criteria. They can't do certain things. They don't have flexibility to do certain things. And that hurts their ability to do their job because teachers, the ones that I know at least, and, and are, go into it because they really have a passion for working with kids. And I just think staying in the system for years kills it in a lot of people because you're so – you're so stuck. Like, no, you've got to teach to this test. You have to do this particular standard. This is the system, and that's it. Where, mm-hmm. where, where I trust the teacher way more than I trust some centralized, you know, program that goes out from, right. you know, Washington or something. I trust the teacher because the teacher's in the god. They're in the classroom, you know. So that's you know really the first thing. Second thing is there's this there, and there's been this now for a generation at least. This mischaracterization of what. Um, self-esteem really means. We've been taught to pump up our kids with self-esteem by telling them they're awesome all the time, but that's not how you build self-esteem. Real self-esteem is built from encountering a challenge, a difficult challenge, and then figuring out a way to yeah. overcome it. And Being then you build by it and g- overcoming. Then it. you build self-esteem. Like yeah. if I was, if you know, if I am just super wealthy all the time and everybody gives everything to me all the time, I might have this false self of, uh, sense of self-esteem. But when I encounter in real life a, my first real problem, and my entire life I've never really encountered a challenge that I've failed at, that's not gonna. I'm not gonna succeed. Whereas if my life has been a string of challenges and overcoming them and challenges overcoming them. Now when I encounter a challenge, I am confident that I am going to come out of this either succeeding or learning. And I think that's a big problem. I think children need to be allowed, like we need to let them fail sometimes and then come, sit down with them and work through that um, and, and show them how they can work through it or how they can learn from it. And that's, I think, a big problem in our current education system. We're afraid to let kids like have these challenges. Like You can't even... You know, certain games aren't allowed in school because there's winners and losers or, it, you know, we have to kind of be careful with how we, like, it's okay to tell a kid, like, look, man, you, this project, you just, you, you didn't. lost, bro. You suck. You didn't do well and you, it's because you didn't put any effort or, or, or you did put a lot of effort, but I think maybe this is something that's a little more challenging for you. So what are you going to do? You're going to work harder yeah. or you're going to give up. Um, or look at this other subject that you seem to enjoy. You know, even when you praise well, kids, it's even when you, when you give kids praise, one of the worst things you can do, like if your kid comes home with a good grade, like I got an A plus on my math test, don't tell your kid how smart they are. And I know that sounds crazy, but when you tell your kid like, oh, you got an A plus, you're such a smart kid, you are going to reinforce this identity in them that they're the smart kid, that they'll never do bad at anything. So when they do encounter something where they're not, it doesn't come easy to them, they're afraid to even try it. They don't want to shatter this image of them being the smart kid. Instead, what you should do is, oh, you got an A on this test. It looks like you worked really hard. At I was going to say, I would even go further and to, instead of telling them anything, I'd be asking, like, how do you think you got that? Like, what, why do you think you got That's it? That's great. Yeah. You know, and get them thinking to help them connect the dots on and then to uh, uh, 
reconfirm that after they tell you, right? Like, oh, you know, I studied really hard, Dad, or I did this, or I, mm-hmm. you know, made sure I got all my homework assignments in, or, you know, I did this, I went extra mile and, and helping them connect those dots and then going back and saying, yes, yeah, and see what happens when you do those little things. And this mm-hmm. is, this is how you, you know, mm-hmm. w- what happens when you do that. Yeah, right? my, so, my kid did a report on, uh, it was a country report and he had to pick a country. He picked Japan and there were two parts to it. There was a written part and then there was a, a oral uh, part. And he scored uh, like the the top grade that he could get for the oral part, and uh, for the written part he got like a B, a passing B. And the comments were, "You could have put more effort into this part." And so when I saw this, I asked him. I said, he goes, "Oh, I got an A here, and I got to be here." And I said, "Which which one did you like more?" He goes, "Well, I love the oral part." And I said, "Well, does it, do you do you think that reflects in your grade?" And he goes, "Yeah." And I said, "Why?" He goes, "Well, I liked it, so I spent a lot of time on it." Mm. And I said, well, that's, exactly. I said, that's just it. What you spend more time at is what you're going to do better at. And so I was really trying to reinforce that, you know, with him instead of saying like, you know, you, you know, uh, you're so smart or whatever, you know, you're just, you know, kind of helping him connect the dots that, you know, you enjoyed it. That's why you worked harder at it. And that's why you got a better result. Mm-hmm. And if you want better results, then you're going to have to apply yourself a little bit more. And if you don't apply yourself, then don't be upset or shocked at when you get a bad result, because that's just a reflection of. The effort. Well, at the end of the day, too, it's 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 setting them up for reality, mm-hmm. right? Like this whole, and I don't know when it started. Like it's it feels like it's been the last like ten years or whatever. When we went on this, like everybody gets a ribbon, everybody gets a trophy. Like tell everybody how great they are, no matter what. It's like, well, why would we do that to them as kids when real life ain't like that? <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't get you. Don't go out. You and, get evaluated at your job. Yeah, like, this is a reality that yeah. we all face. I mean, it's. If you do shit work, like it's not going to fly. Like you're you're going to get fired. And more often than not, you do a lot of hard work. You do a lot of good stuff, and it doesn't get recognized. And you don't exactly. Get, you don't get praise. And you don't get no. praise. And you don't get the raise. And you don't win. And sometimes you even still get fired. Right. Like how does that kid handle that situation when he's been being told his whole life how fucking mm-hmm. great he is and how good at everything he is? The first time that he does all the things he think thinks. Think about he- how extreme that is for entrepreneurs. Right. You know, like you're out out there by yourself you fail it's all on you like there's nobody you can even blame it on but yourself Mm. and you know what a hard (laughs) decision to make like oh i'm gonna put myself all the way out there and you know like i when i fail it's it's very like like obvious why Mm. Mm -hmm. absolutely i think i think teaching kids that uh it's a game of uh, odds and numbers you're going to Try a lot, work hard. Many, many times you're going to fail, um, but your odds of succeeding are much higher when you apply yourself. It's not a guarantee, but it definitely increases your odds and that you control a lot more than you think. But there are things you can't control and things you can't control, don't worry about. I just thought of a... uh, You were talking about your kid applying himself and really enjoying it and being the the oral part of a subject. I just remembered another class that I actually did enjoy in college, which was speech. And I, I don't know if I shared this story on, on Mind Pump before, but I remember writing a speech. At that time, I was working at the dairy, right? So I was a bovine mammary extraction technician. <laughs> and uh, Such a great title. <clears throat> right. I love to throw that around. Like, it was really important. I made a whole, I made a whole $5 an hour or whatever. Uh, Squeezing them udders, baby. So we had these, you know, you put the machine on the cows, right, to milk them. And the inside of the machine are these uh, rubber inserts, and they look spot on to like a, like a dildo. I mean, they, they're all they're rubbery, they're ribbed, they're shaped kind of weird. Like they they totally look like this this sexual toy, right? And and I know that like most people are probably not. We, we grew up in somewhat of a farm town area, but I'm in the college, which is another hour outside of there. So it's not we're in the city. So. I know a lot of people probably have never even seen this tool before, and I have to give a speech, and I believe it was a descriptive speech. And most people, what they would do is like someone like brought like a painting of, you know, that was passed down their family, and they described the whole painting, or someone brought like some trophy and described it, like the story behind all of it. And so I decided to bring this up, and I set the big rubber dildo looking thing (laughs) up on the front. And right away, everybody's like, oh, shit. Yeah, right away, the class is like, you know, chattering back and forth. And instead of telling everybody what the the thing was, I chose to describe what it's used for (laughs) and how you get ready to use it with lubricant and everything before you put it on the cow and like. 
So I did this whole descriptive uh, uh, speech on this tool, and I told the speech in reverse by describing everything it's used for, can be used for. And then I, at the very end, I told it, and the whole class was just like, roaring the whole time oh yeah i had to stop so many times to like and you could see like the look on the teacher's face the whole time i was telling of course i hit it out the park once they finally figured out what it was because it was so creative and but i did really enjoy that kind of reminds me brilliant this is an art class though like i i did actually really well in art and i you know it's nothing that i really like i only took like maybe two classes and i fucking loved it but i never like took more but this teacher had an assignment that she she sent out to everybody. You had to incorporate like three different things, and you had to do it in a way where um, it was it all flowed together. And so, um, you know, everybody's kind of creating like a background is is part of like the one idea. You know, there's something in that background, and they're just trying to tie all these different things together. Well, I'm trying to remember specifically. I had I had like an owl, and I had like um, some kind of a girl. And and then outer space, and so I I incorporated all these different like concepts together. Sounds so, like a sci-fi dream. For yeah. You. So I, <laughs> so I drew this. Okay, I, I'm trying to remember this, but it was like a it was like a moon, and on top of the moon, I had this this owl, and the owl like had eyes, but the eyes were like breasts. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then no, it was a VW bug. That was the other one. So it was a VW bug. So I had the VW like, you know, things in its eyes. Anyways, I, I pulled it all together and it was like so obvious, you know, <laughs> like, and the teacher loved it. She was like, Whoa, like this is so, you know, like creative. What ab- and what about a class that you guys fucking did terrible in or a class that, and that you just math. you hated and had oh, a bad, right away math for hated you. math yeah. you know why i hated math college algebra because math required oh, math terrible. required me I, to do homework every day yeah. and i was the king of getting by and passing all my classes yeah. without ever doing homework yeah. so now my grade is heavily dependent on me actually doing homework that's a good point and i was just i was fucked I so i just math. didn't like, so i shut it off yeah. Yeah. i did it yeah, math was a subject I like. You know what I fucking failed at and did really well? I didn't literally fail. I think I got a C minus in the class, which is one of the lowest grades I got. And I believe I even had a D at one point in this class was uh, chemistry. Hmm. Chemistry, which is funny because we're in science. You would think that I would enjoy it. And I like math. And it's like science meets yeah. math is what chemistry mm-hmm. really is. But chem- I could I not. Loved chemistry. And I, looking back favorite. now as an adult, and, I, and I'm trying to like, like, what was it about that class that I just could not, you know, why... A subject that I feel like I'm more interested in now in as an adult, like mm-hmm. I feel like I would I would be intrigued. I remember like like there a lot of uh, growing marijuana, which I've done. <laughs> it's chemistry. Yeah, it's chemistry, and I just loved it as an adult when I dove into it and I, I had to learn all that. I was maybe because when they were teaching the like the whole like how to it, how to combine it's the them teacher, and teacher man because well, like I had I had a teacher that would let us blow shit up and and you know we would we would like uh, fill these balloons with gas and then like light them on fire and you know we create all these crazy reactions with water and um it was just like exciting because you just start started to see like how you could combine all these elements together and like things would happen and so i just got really sucked into it so you know? it's funny you say that because i'm thinking back right now of that teacher and i actually do remember this teacher uh mr salazar or salza or something like that he uh super feminine guy and you know, as a as a young boy, I didn't have a father figure in in my life. I had I was basically raised by my mother. Uh, and when I look at like the men that I was drawn to, I tend to uh, like I would be drawn to men that were very masculine because I had a lot of fem- I had I had two sisters, sure. I had a mother, so I, I had a lot of those those feminine traits in the home I grew up in. Like you know, as a and so <clears throat> I felt like when I met a real dominant masculine type of man, like already you would probably have my attention. And this guy was like super, super feminine. The way he delivered his his class, I think I was already turned off by it. Mm-hmm. And I, he, I just could never connect. I couldn't connect. And I look back now thinking like that should have been a subject I should have loved, but I struggled the whole year to get through that. And it was and when I think about classes that I absolutely hated, uh, that one in history and history. I, uh, again, this teacher was, reminds me of the teacher you talked about, mm-hmm. about just putting stuff on the, I had a history teacher who literally like the way he did it, instead of putting on that, we did every day was like round Robin reading. 
and it's oh. like, and so you open up chapter one. That's and lazy teaching. Each yeah. each kid would go around and read a page or two. That's lazy I, teaching. Re, read out loud, and he sat big old fat old guy sat behind the desk, and he just sat there while each one of us went around and read. That's la- that's so lazy. Oh, it was painful. That's so it, lazy. It was so painful, yeah. and I could not get into anything to do with the subject whatsoever. God. And forever from that point on went on not enjoying history mm. and he taught his, history and gov right what was it in high school it was uh was it government, government. yeah government yeah. history uh-huh. or government oh, was, was it you got government. history and government yeah. together yeah yep. Yep. terrible so those were probably the ones i didn't mm. like i think what people um what's fascinating to me i should say is how humans especially children are really learning machines and what i mean by that is they're they're driven to learn. Humans in general, this is what we're. This is like our number one uh, driver is to learn new things, novelty, to become obsessed with particular subjects, and to learn everything about it. And if you don't believe me, I mean, you can see any any kid, the worst student that you can find in a classroom, you'll find something that they're into that may be outside of school that they know right. everything about. Right. Yeah. Whether it's Pokemon cards or Minecraft or you know when we were kids, you know, comic books and baseball cards and shit like that, like. We're learning machines, and really, our failure to educate because really our, our our school system is, um, in many ways, not in all they ways, can't make it relatable. In many ways, it's it fa- it's doing very very poorly, and it's it's their it's because they're they're it's not that they're not teaching well necessarily. It's that they're stopping the learning process that naturally happens. Like kids and ad- even adults, we have this desire to constantly learn things, and I didn't really you know I I. Looking back at myself, I recognize it all. But as when I was a kid, I didn't even know I had that. I just thought that I was just I didn't like school and I liked learning about these other things over here. So I'd go home and I'd read about those things. I mean, yeah. When I was thirteen and I got into resistance training, I mean, I read books and books and books on exercise, the human body. I learned chemistry because I wanted to know the pharmacology of supplements. I wanted to learn hormones and how they work in the body. This is all on my own. And we don't tap into that. Uh, instead, we block it with our current systems. And part Not of- only do we block it, but the thing that I, like, I trip out on is how many friends do you have like this that went to college to get their bachelor's or their master's or maybe even their PhD that once they got out of college, they were fucking done. They literally are like... I read enough books in the last eight years plus that hmm. they don't continue to put. They, they then they go into some job that's nine to five that pays them good enough to get by, and they really stop growing because they're over continuing learning. They don't want to. They're mm. so turned off by it. I've had a ton of friends that are yeah. like that. That I just, was like that for a while myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you understand. I get it. Like I understand. Like you because you, you but, felt like you were forced. Well, yeah. yeah because, well, in, in in for the most part, education for me from all the different types of teachers I'd had was like it. It was all based off of like how much you could memorize and regurgitate. And like I just I hate that kind of learning. Like I, I feel like that that is like. I, I just don't feel like I'm absorbing and applying. Like I, I feel like I'm just giving them what they want to hear. And I could easily just take all these bullet points and memorize it and then present it back on their test in whatever format like they're giving me, whether it's like A, B, or C, multiple choice. Uh, you know, I wanna I wanna understand why. Dude, you I, know, they they never could explain to me like, okay, you know, this is a theory, but uh like I, I know like what you're trying to say, but why? Why? And like how am I gonna apply this in my life? Yeah, it's um it's such an old model. It's an old model. It's a Puritan model of putting kids, uh, treating them like robots, putting them in chairs, all the same age. Here's memorize this, regurgitate this, forget it as soon as we take a test, and then and move that's on. That's what I would do. I it's, would forget it. It's very. Uh, it's a very old model, and it's just uh, more and more the modern world is showing that that is a, a dated model. Well, I would love to hear some applicable things that you guys give to your children to to combat that right they i mean because are there certain things that you i mean you talked a little bit about how you you tell you how teach your kid to basically to unpack an a right yeah. you got an a it's not great job son you're smart it's let's unpack that and let's figure out how you got to that mm-hmm. and connecting that dot i think that's incredible yeah advice. so so to so first i explained to my kids that uh the way life works currently in modern societies is 
people want to see those things before they even pay attention to what you have to say or before you get certain jobs. So sometimes you have to play the game and that's just life, right? You got to play the game sometimes, even if, because I know, I know like my son's already asked me, he's 11, right? He, he's already asked me or pointed out certain things like, why am I learning this way when it's not, I'm not remembering it afterwards or Mm -hmm. why are they making us do it this way? And I'm trying to explain to him like, you're right. It's ineffective and efficient. However, this is the game that you have to play sometimes, and that's just life. Sometimes you have to do certain things yeah. because that's the way things are run. So when you get a job and you got to pay bills, like reality yeah. sets, and, in, like you got to play by the rules. And if you want to change it, the best way you can change it is you get in the system. And then you influence and it. And influence it yeah. from the inside. That's really the most effective way. But the, the other thing is we just discuss. We have lots of yeah. discuss, discussions. So if they're learning a particular subject, then we'll sit down and I'll ask them about it. And then we'll talk about it and ask them why and what do you think here? And have you ever seen this, you know, in real life or, right. uh, or you know what does a really fucking good job way better uh, than I've seen the, the school systems do is uh, YouTube has got some crazy resources for kids. Right. Like my kids watch uh, and we watch them together. Ted has these Ted Ed videos mm-hmm. that are for kids. And I swear it's the future. Right? I'll watch yeah. some I of these, swear it's the future. and they're they're compelling. Yeah. yeah, they're entertaining, and they're super informative. And we'll watch a few of them together, and then I'll leave the room or whatever to do something else. And my kids will go through, you know, fifteen videos on all on whatever subject you know interests them. Like, That's cool. Yeah, like why you know. Uh, you know, how, how does the climate work or why does water do this? Or And, the, and they'll be like, oh, this is cool. Or, you know, the riddle that had never been answered. You're like, these are the titles that they use. And so my yeah. kids will click on them and watch them and just learn this particular information. And when you do that, you know, I mean, we're all, I don't know why I even have to argue this. I mean, think about all the things that you know, like the back of your hand. These are all things you're interested in. I don't remember shit that I'm not interested in. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, but things that I'm really into... Well, I, and that can change based off of the teacher, right? Mm-hmm. If the teacher influences you, like, in and, and can speak in a way that, uh, like, exudes this passion towards the subject, like, that's contagious. And I feel like that's why Ted, like, those talks are so compelling because yeah. they have this this a great amount of passion that they're bringing in and then they present it in a way where it excites the entire audience mm-hmm. about whatever the fuck it is. And I, it, it, it's so like it's such an effective way uh, to get that uh, uh, learning to happen. I think we're going to see in the next decades to come, the next few decades to come, we're going to see the most radical change in education than we've ever than we've seen since the beginning of our current model, which was probably established, I would say, in the you know 1800s. What do you guys say? What do you see right now in your the difference between because you both have two kids. What do you see in their 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 ability to learn or how they learn? Uh, is there are they different? Are they both like similar? Like as far as how they learn and well, what like so my kids are younger than Sal's, but um, uh, you know one's in like preschool and then you know and so like Ethan's like uh, approaching second grade, but um, I mean for the most part like you could see their strengths already. So like uh, like Ethan's very very good at math. Like he's just he's just it's so easy and like natural for him. Like that's just such a subject that like resonates with him. So I don't have to like really help him to understand and relate uh with that he can kind of he just starts to think about that on his own like he'll just put all these things together and like you know when I'm when I'm exchanging money like he starts like kind of adding it up in his head and you just see his like little wheels turning with that already and uh you know and so I'm I'm just trying to help him kind of uh with other things as far as English and grammar and all these kinds of stuff but um yeah my youngest is very very much a kinesthetic learner and like uh, I mean he just he's hands on hands on and it's very much like me like i had to be in in the trenches and he's just like i don't know you could see like just kind of what drives him like he like loves to build things and uh and i just i remember that like that was like one of those things i always wanted to have my hands on something and, and figure out why like how it works and like you know what what had to happen to make this building you know stand up the way it did and like all that kind of stuff yeah. so my uh so my daughter's a, a pleaser so uh, as far as grades are concerned, I think she's always going to get good grades because she's always trying to please her, the teacher, please her parents. She wants to show that she does well. So she will practice uh, on her own. We have a dry erase board that uh, I bought for her and she'll do math on it. She'll practice spelling words on her own because she's 
she's really started to identify with being a hard worker and with, you know, giving good grades. And so I'm trying to, uh, you know, also talk to her about why, the why we learn these things and do you enjoy it or is it just that you enjoy doing well, like the difference between the two. My son is very, he will do what is necessary to get by and then he won't do any extra because Still very much like you very much because he can do very well uh he can get away with when doing applied, a lot. right when he's passionate about something mm-hmm. i have i mean the kid will absorb things and learn things to to depths that are just shocking um you know he'll he'll talk about a subject that he's just into and uh, i've you know it's great getting corrected by your own kid you know my son did that <laughs> the other day i don't remember what we were talking about I was talking about stars or something. He goes, no, actually, it works like this. And, uh, and you know, <laughs> my oldest does that to me all the time. And, you know, it's cool. Uh, I, I, tr- I uh, actually, my, uh, I forgot who pointed this out to me, but something that we do as parents that may not be uh, a good thing is that when your kid tries to correct you is to immediately say, no, I'm the parent. I know what's better is to give them the respect to be like, oh, is, is that how it is? Let's look it up and see if that's true. Yeah. To let them know that you respect their opinion. And they may be wrong. They may be right. And so I'll do that now. My son will say something. I was like, oh, really? Where did you read that? Is, is that really how it works? Oh, cool. And then we'll look it up and be like, oh, my God. I, you yeah, because you like cool. the confidence that they're bringing in with that. But yeah, let's fact check. That well, also bit. to show yeah. them that you know I respect um, exactly yeah. his opinion. But um, I think... Uh, you know, it's interesting. I think we're going to see some huge shifts for a couple different reasons. Uh, the first reason being that uh, school, especially higher education, the cost of it has exploded f- so much faster than inflation that it's scary. It's scary how expensive it's getting, and it's getting to the point where certain positions, there's certain jobs that people will get that require school that people are starting to do the math, and we're already seeing a reduction in people applying for these particular degrees. For example, if you go to medical school and let's say you get a loan for all of it and you want to be a general practitioner, you're going to graduate with uh, around $100,000 in debt, sometimes more depending on the school. It could be up to $200,000 in debt. And a general practitioner coming right out of school will make barely over six figures. And you're talking about someone who's now probably maybe 30 after they do the internship or whatever, or, or late 20s, if they really cram, with a hundred something thousand dollars worth of debt, making maybe a hundred grand a year. And these people are looking at the math and going, it's not worth it. It's not like if I leave school or study this other thing that takes the same amount of time, I'll make much more while spending the same amount. So we're going to get these shortages of particular positions because the money is starting to become so, it's so, it's so expensive that it doesn't make any sense. I mean, if it gets to the point where it it will, if the trajectory continues this way, if it continues this way, imagine if it costs you $300,000 and, you know, eight to 10 years after high school of school to graduate to make a hundred grand a year. Is it worth it at that point when you could get a job out of, you know, school, Hmm. working in management and business, working for a big chain, something, making that same amount eight years later, but having no debt. You see what I'm saying? Or investing your money. What if you invested it and you were smart? So people are starting to add these things up. So that's one of the reasons why I think uh, there's going to be a huge change in education. The second reason is the ac- the accessibility of information is so easy and so cheap mm-hmm. that uh, it makes no sense to go to college, take a class, and then that class require you to buy this book that costs 300 fucking dollars. Tell me where in the market anywhere in the market that a book costs $300 besides one that's signed and rare by some, right? <laughs> it's crazy. It's a monopoly. It makes no sense. It's super inflated. Um, I think the school system is going to have to change because I can download that book for almost free. You see what I'm saying? It's insane to me that they're going to charge you $300 for a book. It just doesn't make market sense. You can be really thrifty uh, these days if you're trying to like get a really solid education. And I feel like that's what I'm saying. I think yeah, it's going to change. It the reason, to. the reason why, I, I mean, a lot of people they just want the status. They want to feed the the ego of it, and they want they want to kind of come in like, well, I graduated from you know this prestigious uh, you know academic institution, and um, really all it is is like it's it's this paper on the wall that they want to make sure that everybody knows about. 
well, and, well, whereas you could like you could seriously go through and you could get <laughs> all that same information now so easily. You know oh, how many well, people get jobs? Matt, Matt Damon and Goodwill Hunting said it best, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> right. When he talks yeah. about that, it's it's true. How about them apples? Now, what about what do you think though about uh, the fear? Uh, what I think, like, because I definitely agree, and I say that um, I believe it's changing. I believe that. You know, your TED Talks, TED Education, those type of things are the future of education because uh, how fast and free we can get so much of this great information. Now, the next question or the, the, the challenge to that that I would think is how do we do this and avoid confirmation bias? Mm. Because if you pay attention to how YouTube, Google, any search engines work, your next recommended article or video is just reconfirming whatever it is you search for. So for example, like we were joking earlier on before we turned on the podcast about how many people are actually believe that the earth is flat still and that there's actually a oh, I see what you're saying. a large population of people that still agree. So I got on there and said, you know, proof I I Google or YouTube searched proof that the earth is flat and got a ton of great videos, you know, <laughs> recommended. And I start watching them and they're good. They're like, they bring a, a compelling argument. And then the next one recommend, recommended to me is another one that gives a compelling argument. And so what ends up happening is you could easily go down this rabbit hole of information that is biased be, because of the, how the search engine works on Google uh -huh. and YouTube. Do you have, do you guys yeah, have any so, concern with that? Like so with your kids searching? It? Well, so, so two things that's already, that's always happened, right? People have always kind of gone in that direction of confirming what they know. Yeah. But now it's, it's, it's being fed to you versus where before, like, of course, like, okay, if you have a certain belief in a religion, like you go to your, your one religious book for all the answers versus maybe actually well, so the question, searching yourself the opposite. No, I get what you're saying. So the question really becomes this, because that's true. That can become a problem. But the question becomes, who then do we trust to deliver this information to everybody, right? That, that's the, the defining, yeah, Because you, then you have to put someone in power. Or you teach your kids there you go. to always, you know, okay, son or daughter, you know, when you search this, yeah. you know, this is how you search the opposite. Yes, Critically it. think about this. And you yeah. should watch and listen and read both. That's it. And that's it. Because I, I always put more trust in people as individuals than I do into some central power that says, here's what we have to learn. Here's what we have to know. Everybody's going to learn this particular way. Look, uh, our, uh, our our school system up to a certain point has been public now for a while. Okay. So a lot of our education has been public for a long time. Look at what they've taught us uh, in, in uh, public education. Some of the stuff is good and some of it is obviously very, very biased. Like we don't learn really much about, uh, you know, certain cultures and their influences on, you know, American culture. We don't learn about cer other takes on certain things. Like I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, Vietnam War. What you'll learn in school about the Vietnam War is how we went in there to fight communism and how there was an incident called the Gulf of Tonkin incident where one of a ship got sunk and then that propelled us into war and we did it because we got attacked first. Well, the rea and by the way, this is confirmed. The reality is that never happened. It never happened. The Gulf of Tonkin incident was never an, an incident. It was something that we used to motivate the population to wanting to go to war. And this has happened many, many times. And the public school system being owned and, and, and controlled by the government is going to push a lot of these narratives and you're going to come out of them being like, oh, this is what... So who do you put in control of all this information? And I don't trust anybody to do that. I trust individuals way more. Now, this, does this mean that individuals aren't going to make stupid decisions and some of them are going to believe that the earth is flat and stuff like that? No. But I think that that's going to, that's going to happen no matter what. And I'd rather... You know, what you got to understand is when you have uh, someone who centrally controls things, the the power to really fuck shit up is much higher on that level than it is on the individual basis. And so I always say, you know, it's kind of the lesser two evils or which one is yeah. better. It's tough, man, because like what's the current state where we're at, it's like who really is doing field research? You know, who actually has their hands in these subjects? Who's got, you know, decades behind this information that have, you know, done the hard labor intensive research to, to hone in uh, on becoming an expert in that field, you know, like versus like just getting some sensationalized YouTube video that uh, adds a bunch of shitty graphics that will capture your attention uh, and that will sway you in that direction. Um, it's, it's 
this is going to be a battle. You know, this is the battle of over information. Mm. And, and now like, how do we feed, like, how do we like slice through this and where do we even find, like, uh, that's, I guess I, I, I'm getting kind of frustrated because like, I know some people that have like been swayed by just like sensationalized videos and I just can't believe it, man. Well, uh, you know, what? it's, um, that fear that you're explaining has always existed, um, throughout all of human history. Every single time information has been more accessible. There's always been a fear that what if the wrong information, what if everybody learns the wrong things? We need to control what people learn. Like when the printing press came, you know, was invented, mm-hmm. um, the, 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 the first biggest seller was the Bible. The second one was Marco Polo's World Travels. Like there's a book where Mar- Marco Polo talks about going to all these exotic countries and seeing all these different things. That was the second most popular book. It, it must have blown people's minds when, at a time when people didn't even leave their own village. It must have blown people's minds. The church was very opposed to uh, to the printing press. It was very because they were the teachers of information. They were the centralized authority, mm. and they literally would say things like, "The wrong information is going to come out. People are going to sin. People are going to be bad. Like they're going to learn the wrong things." This has always been uh, the, kind of the rally cry of those people who con- who who control information. And right now. We're hearing the school system, the education system say this. They're the ones that are coming out saying, no, we need to control information. We need to control what people learn yeah. because there's so much bullshit out there. And there is a lot of bullshit. And a lot of it's being promoted by the fucking educators yeah. and by the schools as well. So I never has more information been a net negative. It's always propelled mankind forward and gotten us where we are. Does that mean it's perfect? I completely don't. Absolutely not. I don't think it's perfect at all, but... So far, it's been freaking awesome. So far, it's brought us the Renaissance, and uh, yeah. it's brought us in for you know the, the, well, the industrial age. And I all- think you're going to see more and more businesses like ours that will become uh, filters for different subjects and topics and industries. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I, I when I really like when people try There's and a ask lot of me, opportunity for that for sure. Right. When people try and ask me to describe exactly because we we have a very unique business. What we do right now, it's uh, there's not a lot of people that have paved the way. Uh, for us to look at and go like, oh, an example of this is exactly how you go about doing what we're doing. And so kind of like the short explanation that I give people is, you know, we've become a a filter for the fitness industry. And, you know, I feel like that's really what we try our best to do. Of course, we're going to say things that people don't agree with. And we have our own opinions that sometimes ruffle feathers. But at the end of the day, the main message is that we're trying to help people disseminate all this information that's that we're like the Justin said, we're we're in an era or a time right now of over information. Mm-hmm. Right? There's so much at our fingertips. How do you know what's good and what's and bad what, information? And that's what the teachers of the future, the near future right, are, are really help be. you disseminate. They're stuff, facilitators. Right? Yes. They are yeah. facilitators of information. Um, they're the ones that help guide you mm-hmm. in certain directions, help teach you how to learn and how to be objective. So that you can learn for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, I, you know. Wouldn't you think that's exactly what we do? I hope so. Right. I, I mean, yeah. that's really the goal yeah. of Mind Pump is not to say this way is right, this way is wrong. We're right, you're wrong. It's that you know, let us take you through one. Yeah, our, here's our thought process. Here's the way we right. process this information, and then we we evaluate it at the end. This is what we end up with. And and you know, really, you know. Humans are, and we operate really, really well when we specialize, and that's what we do better than any better than any animals. We specialize in particular things, and this idea that you need to learn this huge breadth of different subjects is just, um, it's just, it's not, it's not true. It's not true that you need to learn all these fucking subjects when you're passionate about this one thing, and that's what you're going to end up doing. There's definitely got to be a framework, and um, it's really going to. I think it's going to be a lot of facilitated. I really think. Education is going to look like this. I think if you're going to learn math, you're going to get it from this person over here because that's the way they. I like the way they teach it. I learn it the best that way. And I want to get history. I'm a, the same way that your TV is starting to change, where you're not going to go to a channel and have to watch everything. Yeah, you're going to watch individual shows and learn what you want and take it from there. I think people are going to be much more specialized and much less, you know, where everybody took all these other classes that we all forgot. Like, you know, you you, you know, you took trigonometry. Do you really remember how to do it? No. You took all these art history classes. Do you remember them? No. You were forced to take them. Uh, I, I think there's going to be less of that and there's going to be more focus on you know uh, particular things. I think it's going to be less important that we remember facts 
and information because that's what computers do for us now. Mm-hmm. Um, these are skills that you don't really need as are much. Are there other countries that are doing that better than us right now? What do you mean? That are actually facilitating the, the education and information system like that. You know, the do way you- we rank education is you know, test scores. So we'll say like China's kicking our ass in these test scores and this country's kicking our ass. Are we taking the same test? Well, we are, but I'd say let's look at innovation. Who's innovating the most? We still kill everybody at that. America is still the the world's leading innovator. Um, And I think part of that has to do with the culture of freedom of expression in America. America still is one of the top countries in the world where you can be very free to express yourself and through that freedom of expression comes innovation. And so America just does a very, very good job well, of it's that. it's the newer country that's the melting pot of like all, a collection of like, you know, all around the world's ideas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So people always like to yeah, forget so, about that part. It's like, we're all like, this is coming from all kinds of different directions. It is. Like, again, look at China. China is a big producer, second biggest economy in the world, the big world's largest population, but their culture and their government doesn't allow for the same amount of freedom of expression. And so they don't innovate near, not even close to how much we innovate or even other Western nations innovate who have much smaller uh, economies. Um, they do a really good job of copying. China will take innovation from America and other countries. They'll copy the fuck out of it and sell it for real cheap because yeah. they're really good at producing shit. Alibaba. For, but uh, when it comes to you know thinking outside of the box and that kind of stuff, did you we see, do such a great job. Did you see Craig? This is a little little off topic, but it reminds me talking about China. Did you see Craig's Insta story of him inside the gym and he did, he did a little cap? This is why China needs me. And they actually have one of those machines still from the 50s where you wrap the belt around you. And to it shakes the hell out of you. Shakes the hell out of you inside one of their gyms. That's great. Wow. Yeah, he did a video of himself. You know what's funny? I thought that was hilarious. I bet you, uh, I bet you guys at some point they're going to find that there is some benefit to doing something like that. It's not fat loss, but I bet you they're going to find that some movement shaking or whatever vibration, is going to yeah. do something good for you. And it's, I, when that happens, I'm going to laugh so well, hard. Well, I, I bet you could you could make some similar connections to the power plate. I mean, maybe. Yeah, right. right. As maybe. far as what, what, you know, I remember the first time that I saw the power plate, I thought it was a gimmick and a joke. And when you actually learn the science behind it and how it works and what it's doing with your central nervous system, that makes a little more sense. So you're you're probably right. I mean, I think I, it'll be funny though. You could definitely put a spin on it. So anything. much of that has happened, right? You know what I mean? Where there's this old thing that everybody made fun of, and then it came out and they're like, actually, yeah. saunas do uh, are good for. Oh, well, I love the one that's going around right now. Our forum is the what's the name of it? What's the sh- the shake weight looking thing version? Oh, for the one the, where you sit the on butt it? Plug, the butt plug version of the <laughs> shake weight. Oh my god, <laughs> what's it called? Uh, oh. I don't remember. It looks like a it's, it's like a hydraulic. Uh, uh, it looks like you're yeah you're riding a spring or yeah. something. Uh, b- b- smart marketing, right? It looks like you're having sex, and they know that that shit will get shared all over the yeah, place. Yeah, no, it's just it, like I, the shake weight. No, 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 brilliant, Dude, absolutely brilliant. One hundred percent. Why those things get like make so much money is just because they're silly. Like you know, the snuggie. Like uh, they sold millions of those stupid things. Damn, what well, are we doing wrong? Well, I mean, we just I recently was talking to uh, the company that we're hiring right for our marketing and stuff, and we're heading that direction. And one of the ideas that he has to just capture leads in the funnel and it's absolutely brilliant is you know a a thing where you can like and they've done this on Facebook already where you can uh, take a picture of of yourself and it shows like uh, wh- who you would look like as a celebrity, like a celebrity person. Like everybody's in, just because you're oh, curious. Yeah. Like I'd be yeah. curious, like who, what are you going to make me? It could be yeah, so far off. The whole thing. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. But it, and so he wants to do something similar with, you know, what would you look like super ripped? You know, like. Oh the, my God. Uh, right. Take a picture of yourself. What would you look like? And then the thing morphs and transforms into a super ripped version that's of vi- you. That'd be a viral freaking Right. And I, I told him, I said, God, that's so fucking brilliant to just. Just, just to capture the leads, you right? Get all the body shaming army like oh, coming just, after you. Oh, why would you have to look like that? No, it's, <laughs> it's Jeez, shut very, up. very clever, though. Very, very clever. So yeah. that was great. Yeah. Well, there you go. Check this out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day. It's a fantastic resource. We're talking about education. We post new video every day on exercise, on fitness debates on you know mobility and you know f- helping yourself if you have joint pain excellent resource absolutely free subscribe you'll get alerted every si- every time we post a new video also uh, check us out on Instagram 
Mind Pump Media. That's the page. You can also find our individual pages. I'm Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.